Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be delving into the question, what the heck is going on with Red Hat and their source code? So let's take a look at that and uh, dive in a bit. The major YouTubers have been talking about this that covered Linux, that is, in paragraph where he says, as the CentOS stream community grows and the enterprise software world tackles new dynamic bone of the enterprise Linux innovation, we are continuing our investment in and increasing a commitment to CentOS Stream. CentOS Stream will now be the sole repository for public RHEL related source code releases. For Red Hat customers and partners, source code will remain available via the Red Hat customer portal. To be clear, this change does not signify any changes to the CentOS project, CentOS Stream, or source availability for CentOS Stream or CentOS SIG. So for I think maybe this could be a nothing burger, but you know, this is, uh, there are a number of, of RHEL compatible uh, distributions which are which are dependent upon the Red Hat uh, source code. Why wouldn't you want to use the CentOS Stream repositories as your basis for? Well, the problem with CentOS Stream is it's a rolling release. So as updates come in, as they approach a a major release like 9.2, 9.3, do they freeze it? Do they hold it while they're getting ready to make that release? If that's the case, then it might be possible for uh, the, the patches and updates that go into RHEL. And so that is not a suitable place to do it. A lot of people are saying, no, that doesn't violate the, uh, the uh, GNU public license or GPL. How okay, so wh what I'm going to do here is I have done a DNF list installed with the installed option to get a list of packages for CentOS streams and then do the same thing on Red Hat 9.2. And so what we're going to do is just compare them. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, I have two files here, sent new.txt and Red Hat new.txt. So let's just more them and see what we get. So we see right away that, you know, the, um, the CentOS package, which is on top, the one with the less than caret, that one is showing version, a patch release for Live Raw. And you're seeing also some differences here as well with Network Manager. This is version 43, version 42. So the usefulness, if you're trying to maintain a, a repo for patches, is that you will get completely out of whack. And I don't know how you're going to handle all that. It, this looks like a very complicated thing. I think what Red Hat is actually hoping is these people just give up and go home. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you can see Alyssa129 and 128. So... Yeah, we almost every package is going to get. There's no way to predict either because it's all dependent on the package maintainer on when things get pushed into CentOS streams. CentOS streams is essentially a rolling release. Okay, so the first thing is I have the MEND open source license report for 2022. This is this used to be white source. White source used to ever kind of like Black Duck. And everybody has been bought out by everybody, and so uh, Black Duck is concentrating on compliance and se security risks, and they're part of Syn uh, Synopsys now. Uh, Mend now owns the rights to White Source, and so yeah, it's it, it gets complicated. But I thought I, we would kind of go through this a little bit. First thing in this report is is that there are over 200 open source licenses that people are using today for their projects. Holy crap. So what they have done is they've categorized these basically into three buckets. There's copy left, which is our traditional GPL-like licenses. There's 
There, I mean, even in the GPL, you have GPL2, GPL3, LGPL2, LGPL2.1, LG, uh, LGPO3. Then you've got AGPL, which plugs up the it's it's the what we refer to as the software as a service hole, because GPL didn't specifically talk about it, and so they invented the AGPL in order to do that. There's also weak copy left, which is kind of like CD, CDL, uh, MPL, and Eclipse, which is how they're marketed. And then there's permissive, like the uh, MIT and Apache and BSD licenses and a bunch of others. So, that, that if, so if we're talking about permissive and weak and copy left, now you know what we're talking about. So the top open source licenses that they measured in 2021. This is the latest one, by the way, so they haven't come out with one for 2022 yet or one for 2023. So the as of this time, uh, Op Apache was by far, as you can see, it is by far the most popularly used open source license. So, and I, this is the total, this is what's left. Uh, MIT is next, they have quite a few followed by GPL version 3 and 2. And then we have BSD licenses here, LGPL here, Microsoft Public License, and BST2. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the top ones and then the other rest of the 200 fill in the gaps underneath. The other interesting thing here is that you'll find like OpenSSL, for example, actually has two licenses. It has two identities in the licensing. It, it has a open source license and it has a proprietary license. So yeah, you're going to find that a lot with a lot of these packages. And then when you go down through the BOM, the software bill of materials, that is all of the libraries and other packages that make up a, a application on Linux, you'll find a huge plethora of different licenses mixed in here. So, it, 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 yeah, it takes a software program to figure all this stuff out. What is being used uh, today? So you'll notice that the permissive licenses are increasing over time. That is the ones like uh, the Apache and MIT those have been steadily increasing over time. The GPL has been dying. It has been dying off because it's too restrictive. Who's making that decision? Corporations. And the corporations that are funding the efforts uh, for the developers to work in are basically telling the developers, hey, you need to change your license. Now, before you yell at me, I happen to think the GPL is a great thing. It, it did a lot of good for Linux, but I'm just reporting the fact. The fact is it's dying it's because people are switching away from it. So if you think that it violates the GPL, chances are it probably doesn't. And if it's using a permissive license, we are rapidly approaching a point in time where the large houses for Linux distributions like Canonical, SUSE, Red Hat, Debian, they can do whatever the heck they want. Permissive licenses not only allow for, some of them allow for patent uh, code to be included in the soft software base. So you have to be careful of that. There's also some of it allows proprietary code. Some of it says you don't have to share anything, source or, or anything, and you can charge for whatever you want. You can charge for the software. So, I mean, there are all kinds of pitfalls and black holes in this universe that we are creating for ourselves. Okay, so I get now when we establish that the GPL is declining, but why? Why is it declining? Well, Jono Bacon, back in February the 13th of 2017, wrote an article discussing this very thing. And he, this is, uh, this is the, Remember, I, I said it, Black Duck used to count the number of uh, open source licenses that were being used in packages. And today, by the way, 
that number has, of packages has grown to over 4 million today. And I think there's something like 130 million open source files that are encased within those 4 million packages. So that if you think Arch has a lot of packages, you would be wrong. The, the, the population of open source packages is absolutely huge. So what so he talked about what was going on here, why the why the drop? As you can see, this is GPL2 right here. So from 2010, it went from and dropped to about 20. That's a precipitous drop. It was over 40. It was actually closer to 50. So a precipitous drop over seven years. This is the MIT license, which is increasing very rapidly, and then Apache starts to grow as it starts to become used. This is GPL3. So the Linux kernel sits over here on GPL2. They have never adopted GPL3 because Linus has some real issues with the GPL3, and he just doesn't feel comfortable putting the Linux operating system under it, the kernel itself under it. Why? Why is, why is this dropping so dramatically? So he said he thought it was because... Uh, is due to the increased growth in open source and business and nervousness around the GPL in the commercial world. Now, I can tell you uh, personally, on a, uh, when I worked at Raytheon, there were several projects that were uh, in motion at Raytheon where they were starting to use open source in those. And they encountered the GPL after they had released uh, their software, which... Uh, they were charging the customer for. They were charging the customer a license to use it. Well, that put them in, at crossroads with the GPL because they had used uh, software which had the GPL. According to the GPL license, if you use it or you modify it, it everything becomes GPL. It's like tag, you're it. Well, Raytheon didn't do that, and so they were in trouble. And that created a, uh, after that point, FOSS had, or free and open source FOSS, had to be approved by the lawyers inside of Raytheon before it could be used. So that added costs to us. Our, pra our program had uh, GPL in it as well. We had open source so uh, software in it. And so we had to apply every time we came out with a new release. Where are we going with this? Well, we've kind of, I mean, there, if you look at some of the history behind the weaknesses of the GPL, you can clearly see that the handwriting is kind of on the wall where the, the big corporations, and it's not just Red Hat, Canonical is, is also pushing at the GPL, SUSE is pushing at the GPL. How are all these companies doing that? Well, Canonical is pushing their snaps packages. Currently, they have their own private repository for that. Now, you can pull the source code down using a special command to do that. It'll empty out into a directory and you can go look at it. But it wouldn't be hard for them to turn that off. And that is the only way to get that source code it's not published on any other repo. It's all inside of that canonical closed walled garden of snaps. So that's kind of where they're pushing. Uh, OpenSUSE uh, Leap, which is currently, I think the most current version is 15.5. That originally was supposed to be the last in the line for Leap. And then they were planning to announce a follow-on product of some kind they haven't done that yet. They did announce that they were going to continue uh, development on Leap at least through 15.6, which will come out sometime in 2024, and that'll be supported for, what, nine months or so, usually is what they do. So, uh, And then no more plans for Leap development. They Al, ALP is actually a server product. Well, they just released their third prototype. This was released in April. This was a, a, a note uh, that came out April the 3rd called uh, Pizbernina. And, that's an, and the adaptable Linux platform provides a new approach to 
not desktop, but enterprise. So this this is not something that's going to come into the desktop market. There is two legs of the stool for it. Let's just talk about the encryption part of it first. So there's two legs of the stool. There's encryption in flight, encryption at rest. So in flight means you encrypt the data as it traverses the network. And encryption at rest is when the data is not being used, you encrypt it on disk. The, there is a third leg that's encryption in use. That, and that is a new functionality that a lot of the latest processors support, which permits the data to remain encrypted and it's 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 de-encrypted momentarily during its use in the CPU. So when the CPU needs it, it decrypts it and then encrypts it back before pushing it back out to memory or into cache. So there's also some confidential computing. Uh, there's confidential virtual machine support that permits uh, encryption at those three layers that we just talked about for virtual machines. Uh, there's also uh, there's also TPM support. This is not intended to be used on the desktop. So where does that leave us in uh, in in the in the final thoughts? Well, my first final thought is. I think this is an exercise in boiling the frog and the frog being the GPL. And I don't think that uh, Red Hat is done. And I don't think Canonical is done. And I don't think SUSE is done either. They're all trying. They haven't said this publicly. And so I'm not putting words in their mouth. But to me, on the surface, it would appear that they are manipulating Linux in a direction so they can control the source, so they can control the binaries, and they don't care who develops it. So my advice, and that's the advice that I'm taking, is I'm not going to support these projects. I'm dumping them. I'm dumping Ubuntu. I'm dumping Red Hat, and I, I've never had SUSE in any of my commercial, but if I did, I'd be dumping them too. So, and I would recommend you do the same. Just dump them, stop using them, uh, get off of them, and don't don't spend your time with them. Help support the other communities that are worthwhile that aren't doing these dumb things. So, on that note, <laughs> uh, I want to thank my Patreons for our, and my channel members for their support. Uh, you go a long way to keep the channel going, and I sure do appreciate you. And if you watch the video uh, this far, I, I sure do appreciate you as well. And thank you for uh, your support, and hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>